And Mr. Buhari's first uh, grant, what we call a status economic model, um, which was depending on the state to lead growth. And um, we've seen the consequences. State governments, for instance, you know, they keep talking about how they were unable to pay salaries. Now, as a result of the um, multiple exchange rates we've had to appraise by the central bank, state governments have lost about 500 billion in extra revenues from the federal allocation as a result of using 306 rather than the market rates of 360. So as a result of the state-led economic model we've operated, there have been dire consequences. On false subsidies, we've spent about between 1.2 to 1.3 trillion. At the same time, um, revenues, interest payments, you know, we like to tout how benign our uh, debt to revenue ratio is, exactly. uh, our debt to GDP ratio rather is, and we say things like, oh, it's 20%, which means we have room to grow. But if you look at the ratio that has more consequence for the economy, which is interest payments to revenue, we've spent about 60% of revenues on interest payments alone, which implies that for every 100 naira Nigeria ends, we spend about 60 naira to pay debt. So what that means is that um, we've run out of room to grow debt, to push growth. We've actually run out of room for subsidies as well. What that means is that in this second term, Mr. Buhari has only got two choices. He's locked between a rock and a hard place. We have to reform. And these reforms imply that we have to give the private sector greater control of the economy in terms of management of key resources, in terms of management of key infrastructure, in terms of the kinds of price controls we've put you know, on lots of things like electricity tariffs, price controls on you know, PMS and petroleum metro, um, 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 premiums, um, pre premium motors, we beg your yeah. pardon, you know, which like I said has cost us about 1.2 to 1.3 trillion. So now we missed a golden opportunity to deregulate. Um, Mr. Buhari is the first president who's finally been able to tame the anti-reformist stance of the labor union. If you recall, when he increased the, um, um, the petrol prices from about 86 yeah, to didn't see that all that much, we didn't see the, we didn't see that um, the usual um, alusa continua demonstrations shut from the labor of, shutdown of the country and all, which means that he's got the political capital to expend on seemingly on popular reforms. So more tough choices going on going on in the second term, you think? Inevitably. Okay. If not, there will be consequences. All right, now, so looking at your expectation, I'd like you to speak on the economic recovery and growth plan. You know, we saw how that started started in the first, first term and how you think this would evolve in the second term. It's actually difficult to make a call on that great document. It's a very beautiful document. Um, initial euphoria around implementation of the document, I must confess, has sort of waned because we've not seen more traction. The document, for instance, calls for the removal of the subsidy. It calls for the concessioning of key government assets, like the airports, like the rail lines. It calls for increased reduction in government participation in the oil sector. And recall that the ERGP was produced by this regime. In Nigeria, usually what you see is a case of this uh, regime A doesn't want to implement regime B's policies. But this document was produced by this regime. So it actually is quite confounding to see that this government doesn't want to even implement its mm -hmm. own policy. Yeah. So it's actually a very difficult call to make. A lot of it, a lot of the direction on the ERGP will depend on the makeup of the key, of the cabinet, especially the key positions. You know, um, transportation, the big three in one, power, power, housing and, yeah. and construction, and then aviation as well. Because you know we saw a bit of movement in things like the. The, the concessioning of the airports and then everything just stalled. And then very importantly, other key assets, the most important assets we'll probably be watching is the transmission line. Because we cannot claim to have a private sector-led electricity industry when the transmission line or the transmission aspect of that industry is wholly in the hands of government. Secondly, we cannot claim to have a private sector-led uh, electricity industry when tariffs are still being controlled by the government such that operators cannot recover their costs based on the current tariffs. And then at the same time, citizens' expectation is to see increased you know, power, power and distribution and generation and consumption. So okay. we have quite a number of anomalies that we have to iron out. Okay, I want to take you up on another issue, which is around revenues. We've seen how that was a big challenge 
going in, in last year and mm -hmm. even you know the years before that but then we are hearing this new um you know um this new um talk from the FIRS the Federal Inner Revenue Service talking about the, the, that Nigeria should brace up for a possible VAT increases you know to about 30 to 35 percent what do you make of this and how much will this you know impact government revenues going forward now I think there's one key issue that we need to address in Mr. Buhari's second term which is um it's it's the communication strategy where key officials come out make pro-market reforms announcements and then the market waits and then nothing ever happens. We've heard this before. With VAIDs? Yes, we've heard this with VAIDs. We, we saw it with VAIDs, but at the end of the day, the nail, the, we're still not hitting the nail on the head. So it's not something I'll get excited about. These are reforms we need. With, at 5% VAT, value added tax, we're probably one of the lowest in, in the region. Right? So there's room for growth, even though the bulk of it, about 85%, is shared by the states and local governments. But there's room for growth there. But like I said, are we going to hit nails on the head in this second term? Or is it just going to be talk without action? So, yes, I like the sound of that tune that we we'll have to increase VAT, that we'll have to grow non oil revenues. But like I said, the ERGP document is there. Are we finally going to implement in this second term? Because right. we, if we do not implement, the consequences are we may lose an entire generation. You know, we may lose a decade in this country. This could be Nigeria's lost decade of, you know, of poor growth. Nigeria's poor, lost decade of, of poor, poor growth. growth. Very, very interesting. Sound by Thank you so much.